Hi guys, I'm back and this time I'm reviewing season 9 of The Simpsons. As ever, I'm going to go through each of the 25 episodes this season, talking about all of the major parts of each one, as well as giving a bit of trivia about each one as well. Now as ever, I would like to thank The Simpsons Wiki for helping me out with said trivia, and before I begin with the season, I want to talk a bit about it. Indeed, this is kind of an infamous season in this show's history, not necessarily because it's bad, but because a lot of people believe this is where the series really started to show signs of decline. Some people even say it jumped the shark in this season. As I said in my season 8 video, I always used to consider that season to be the cuttle for the classic era. That being said though, I still remember this season quite fondly overall, so I'm still looking forward to seeing it again. I just kind of expect to run into a few more lacklustre episodes than we've been used to seeing since about season 2. Anyway, before I begin ranking these episodes, some info on the staff makeup for the season. Mike Scully is a showrunner for the first time this year, taking over from Oakley and Weinstein. There are still several episodes which are holdovers from the previous season though, so essentially Scully was showrunner for about 80% of the season. Anyway, without further ado, let's just get into this, shall we? Season 9, Episode 1 The City of New York vs Homer Simpson After being driven mad by his status as designated driver, Barney ends up leaving Homer's car in downtown Manhattan. When the family journeys to New York to retrieve a car, Homer has to face up to his dislike of the city. So, some trivia here is that after the September 11 attacks, the episode was banned from television for a short while. After a few years, the episode did come back, but some airings still banned the scenes involving the Twin Towers. The best moment for me in this episode was just Homer keeping watch over his car. I gave this one a 4 out of 5. This is quite a famous episode and while many people regard it as a classic, a small minority of people seem to really hate it. As you've guessed by my rating, I am nearer to the love side than the hate side. I don't view it as a classic though because the premise is very simple. It's basically watching Homer being kicked about by New York City for 22 minutes. That side of things can wear a bit thin at times and the brief scenes away from Homer, with Marge, Lisa and Bart exploring the city, are decent but no more than that really. What saves this episode for me is that there are a number of good sequences which keep me entertained. From the opening set piece about Barney being the designated driver to the flashback of Homer in New York. You also have that Flashing Meadows fantasy sequence that Homer has. I found that some of these scenes have pretty good animation and are surprisingly creative given how basic the main plot actually is. The jokes were about average. I found quite a few of Homer's antics funny, such as him running between the towers and drinking crab juice. And of course the absurd ending where he drives off in his destroyed car only to get garbage thrown in his face. I think if you can stomach Homer getting kicked around constantly then you'll probably like this one but if not I can see why this might not be for you. Season 9 Episode 2 The Principal and the Pauper During a banquet to honour his 20th anniversary as principal, Seymour Skinner's true identity is revealed to be Armin Tamzarian. Now exposed as an imposter, Tamzarian retires and relocates to his old neighbourhood in Capital City. So some trivia is that despite the ending where they pledge never to mention this again, this episode is actually referenced by Lisa in the episode I Dobot. My best moment was, keep looking shocked and move slowly towards the cake. That quote from Homer. This episode gets a 2 out of 5. To say this episode is controversial is an understatement. Fans of the show and even some of the show's staff have come out and condemned the storyline here. You only have to do a quick search on the internet to find loads of videos from people saying that this is where the show truly jumped the shark. As always though, the decline of a series is never quite that simple and it doesn't usually boil down to just one factor, so I don't really agree with that viewpoint. That's not to say I like this episode, in fact I find it rather lacklustre. For a start, there are tons of obvious continuity errors with Skinner's story and you just can't expect to drop a massive bombshell like this about one of your core characters and expect people to buy into it. I honestly don't know what the writers were thinking when they thought that would work. There is no kind of foreshadowing to any of it either, which makes the whole episode come across as desperate. The ending to the whole thing is a cop-out of course, but to be honest, if they are going to do this type of plotline, then forgetting about it all at the end is probably a wise move. This avoids being a one because there were elements of Skinner's backstory that I liked. Seeing more about his war days is always good, and I actually don't mind the idea of him being a street punk in his youth. The jokes were also fine, there is that Homer quote I mentioned, but I also like Skinner's line of, up yours children, as he leaves to capital city. So, in a vacuum, this is just a kind of middle of the road, kind of disappointing episode. But in the context of the whole show, it really does stand out as a bit of a bizarre mess of characterization. Season 9, Episode 3, Lisa's Sacks. 
When Lisa's saxophone is destroyed during a scuffle with Bath, the family recounts the story of how she originally got the instrument. So, some trivia for this one is that while telling Bart and Lisa about 1990, Homer says Tracy Ullman was entertaining America with crudely drawn filler material. This is of course a reference to how The Simpsons started out on the Tracy Ullman show. My favourite moment was the story of Bart's first day at school. This one gets a 5 out of 5 from me. This was a very cool flashback plot that, despite jumping wildly from scene to scene, never failed to be interesting. Lisa's sax getting destroyed is a very simple way to kick off the story, but they expand on it in unexpected ways. For instance, instead of giving us some dramatic sappy story of Lisa getting it back, instead we are treated to the story of how she got it in the first place. It was nice to see how Homer was the one to make the sacrifice to buy it for her, and indeed, he makes it again to replace the sax in the end. Even though this is primarily a Lisa story, we also get a nice little look into Bart as a kid also. It is nice to see how he was as a 5 year old, and his experiences of school are just great, and kind of relatable to me at least. The way he starts as this happy, optimistic kid, and then through teachers who don't really care, to school bullies, it all just comes crumbling down for him. The thing which tips this over the edge to being a 5 for me though, is the comedy. I was surprised by just how many good jokes there were here. You have the elaborate sequence of the saxophone being destroyed, Homer's hallucinating about what Lisa could become, and Kent Brockman reporting that this is the hottest day in Springfield in billions of years, since the planet was just molten rock. I haven't even mentioned the fact that Apu appears at various points throughout the episode for literally no reason. Add all of this together and you have a bit of an unexpected and underrated gem, in my opinion. Season 9, Episode 4, Treehouse of Horror 8. The three short stories this year are The Home Mega Man, Fly vs Fly and Easy Bake Coven. So some truth is that the title Fly vs Fly is a reference to the Mad Magazine comic strip Spy vs Spy. The segment itself is based on the 1958 film The Fly, rather unsurprisingly. My best moment was Homer accusing Lisa of being a witch. The way that he just kind of sells her down the river after she embarrasses him in front of the town is great. Another year, another treehouse of horror, and another 5 out of 5. So, as usual, I will break this down part by part. The first one is admittedly a rather straightforward zombie slash mutant story, but they managed to have enough fun with it to make it all work. The idea of the French launching a nuke at Springfield because of a slur by Mayor Quimby is maybe a bit random, but it leads to some great lines from Quimby and of course a Ooh, I wasted my life from Comic Book Guy. Homer is also pretty good in how he takes the loss of everything in his stride so simply and easily. And when he does reunite with his very much still alive family, Marge killing all of the mutants is a quick and funny way to end. The second part is interesting more than funny, I found. There are some cool interactions with the matter transporter, and Homer buying it in the first place is a riot. It only transports matter? Frink is really a poor businessman by the way if he's willing to sell a matter transporter for less than $2. Actually seeing Bart trade places with a fly throws up some good gags. There wasn't much of a resolution to the story, but I guess Homer taking the axe to Bart instead of the machine is a good point to end on. The final part was perhaps my favourite overall. It was fun to see the Simpsons take on the old witch trials. The revelation that Marge was actually a witch was also nice and kind of unexpected. This is the funniest of the three segments too in my opinion. There are some great lines here from the townspeople, such as Moe's, I've heard enough, burner as well as that ending one I mentioned with Homer getting the town to chase Lisa to distract them from mocking him. I also like the idea that the first Halloween came from the witches scaring people into giving them treats. Overall, I was quite surprised by how solid this year's Treehouse of Horror turned out to be. Sure, it was not as memorable as some of the previous ones, but all of the segments had value. Even the intro with the fox sensor getting stabbed to death was quite funny. I mean, he kind of deserved it, didn't he really, let's be honest. Season 9, Episode 5, The Cartridge Family after a soccer riot tears up Springfield, Homer purchases a handgun to protect his family, but Marge disapproves and requests that he dispose of the weapon. So, the events of Who Shot Mr. Burns are mentioned here, with Homer thinking it was Smithers who shot Mr. Burns. Well, as Lisa said, it would certainly make more sense if that was the case. My best moment was the scene of Homer actually buying his gun. So, I don't quite love this one as much as Homer loved guns, but I still think it's pretty good, so I gave it a 4 out of 5. Homer buying the gun is a simple plotline and for the most part this episode plays out in a straightforward manner. The first half is just about the town going into riot mode which leads to Homer getting a gun for protection. I actually forgot how many funny moments there were in this episode. There were a lot of quick snappy jokes such as the loudener and the launcher for shooting down police helicopters. Homer's I kill you if I had my gun is a classic as is Raphael's response to it. Yeah well you don't. I also laughed at the follow up scene of Homer mumbling to himself in the middle of the night. 
Why Jan and kids stay at the Sleep Easy Hotel is also interesting, even if it is a little dark in places. Bart and Lisa actually manage to have fun there, which stops it from becoming too depressing, I think. The reason it's never got a 5 from me is that the back and forth over the gun between Homer and Marge is not well done. Homer lies to Marge twice about giving up the gun, so he learns no lessons in the end. And then to top it all off, Marge actually keeps the gun at the end anyway, which makes her look like a total hypocrite. Really, both Homer and Marge come out of this episode looking like jackasses, to be totally blunt. Now, I get that they were kind of going for the fast type of ending with the snake robbery and the NRA members and so on, but it all felt a bit sloppy to me and left a bit of a sour taste in my mouth. It does not undo all of the funny stuff here though, which is the majority of the episode, and for that reason it's still a good episode despite some questionable character writing. Season 9, Episode 6 Bart Starr After Springfield's youth are deemed to be overweight, they are forced to join a Pee Wee football team. The team is going well under Ned's leadership, but when Homer takes over and puts Bart in a starring role, things quickly go downhill. So some trivia is that Homer can be seen wearing the Tom Landry hat he bought in Season 8 episode You Only Move Twice. My best moment was Lisa trying to join the football team. This is a 3 out of 5 for me. This is another episode where Homer is not exactly at his most likeable. It is a jerk to Flanders of course, which leads to Homer replacing him as the coach. Now there's nothing new of course, he's always like that to Flanders, but when he starts being mean to Bart and the kids, it becomes a bit much. That's not to say that they don't get good moments out of it though. I like the gag of him cutting everyone from the team at first, even if it was running to the ground a bit too much by the end. We couldn't even escape it in the end credits for god's sake. You're cut too, shushy. Abe is brought in for a few scenes to show off how bad of a father he is to Homer, and as you might expect, that does little to lift the mood. The scenes of the boys actually playing the football are decent enough. Seeing Nelson dominate the other teams is rather amusing by itself. You would just better ignore the appearance by his dad though. That kind of creates a few continuity issues going forward. The main conflict of this one though, between Homer and Bart, I just did not really care about. It was all rather low stakes, and it never really had any conclusion to it either. The only conclusion we do get is Bart being taken away by the cops. Throw into all this that bland and pointless scene with Joe Namath and Vapor Lock, and this really is an episode which flatters to deceive. Season 9, Episode 7 The Two Misses Nahasapima Petalons. Just as he begins to enjoy his life as a swinging bachelor, Apu receives a reminder of his arranged marriage. Desperate to escape the agreement, Apu claims to have already married Marge. So, something interesting to note is that the events of Apu's wedding are referenced in two future episodes, both in season 11 episode It's a Mad 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 Marge, and season 13's The Sweetest Apu. My best moment was Homer living in a retirement home, so I give this episode a 3 out of 5. The plot here is not the best, for sure, and it barely fills out the episode. You can see that they were really kind of thin with the runtime at times. I don't really care about Manjula as a character, and as such, the whole Apu side of things fell a bit flat for me. Apu did get some good moments early on with his dating, but this was not really one of the more memorable Apu spotlights, even though he did stay married in the end. Homer did many crazy things here throughout, and most of them worked for me this time. I especially liked his bits in a nursing home as I said, because we got to see a glimpse of Abe's life as well, and Homer having that wheelchair race with Jasper is just as good as it sounds. In this era of the show, Homer's wacky subplots were really becoming more common, but on this occasion I think it had enough jokes to be good, and it actually helped the episode. Overall, this is a decent episode, nothing more. Apu probably summed it up best when he called the whole pretending to be married to Marge a farce. Season 9, Episode 8 Lisa the Skeptic Lisa and her classmates uncover a skeleton with an abnormal bone structure, leading the townspeople to conclude that the remains must be that of an angel. So, David Cohen wrote the episode after being inspired by a visit to the American Museum of Natural History. My favourite moment was the Lionel Hutz appearance. So, I give this one a 3 out of 5. I feel like this is a story which had the potential to be much better than it actually ended up being. The topic of religion versus science is explored here, but it treads predictable ground, and I never really felt invested in our whole idea of this angel skeleton. Lisa is the main character here, and to be honest, I think she's a bit too self-righteous again at times. The fact that she needs to go around saying she feels sorry for people for believing in angels is a bit irritating, and to be honest, I think that's true regardless of whether you agree with her or not. Also, the ending felt like a bit of a cop-out. Sure, there was an element of foreshadowing them all early on, but the fact that the scientist turns up at the end just to tell Lisa that he never actually did the tests is a bit of a slap in the face. I mean, why have him in the episode at all? 
if his only contribution is to create a plot hole which has to be explained away in a half-assed way at the end. Even though I was disappointed overall with the main plot, the jokes here were still alright, which helps my enjoyment a bit. As I said, Lionel Hutt's cameo as Lisa's lawyer is great, what with the way that he laughs at Lisa with the construction people after they say that she can't stop them. Also, although a bit over the top, I still liked Homer's antics in stealing and then exploiting the angel skeleton for money. Season 9, Episode 9, Realty Bites Where Marge becomes a real estate agent, her firm loses sales due to her honesty. Also, Homer buys Snake's car at the police auction, and Snake is determined to get it back. The trivia I have for you here is that this episode marks the first appearances of both Gil Gunderson and Cookie Kwan. And this episode is a bit of a changing of the guard, if you will, in that regard, because those two characters kind of take over some of the roles left by Phil Hartman's characters after his death. The best one for me was Kurt Van Houten getting his arm chopped off. I ended up giving this one a 4 out of 5. I found both the main and the subplot here to be pretty solid. They were simple, but they served their purpose well. And Marge getting a real estate job with Hartz as their boss provides some good lines. It does feel like it drags a tiny bit at times, probably because Marge's style is very on the nose, and when she is showing people around the houses, there's literally nothing else going on. I do like the bit where she sells the murder house home to Ned though. Ned's girly scream in reaction to the purple drapes is great, as is Rod and Todd's reaction to actually finding out about the murder house. Although he still gets in a few good lines, as always, this is not one of the best Lionel Hutt's appearances in my opinion. In fact, I liked him more in a previous episode, despite having a lot less screen time there. It is a bit of a shame, really, because this is Hutz's last speaking role on the show. The back and forth fighting between Homer and Snake over Bandit is pretty entertaining. It has my favourite joke with Kirk's arm. I love how it is set up like the sandwich will be cut in half, but his whole arm is taken instead. And Kirk's mild reaction of, ow, is just a cherry on top. The ending, which connects the two plots, was wacky, but it worked well enough. I like how Snake was the only one hurt by the house literally collapsing in on everyone. All in all, I did enjoy this one, but it had a few lulls which stopped it from becoming a classic episode. Season 9, Episode 10 Miracle on Evergreen Terrace After Bard accidentally burns the family's Christmas present, he claims that they were stolen by a burglar. At first, the townspeople are happy to help, but when a truth is revealed, the Simpsons find themselves as pariahs. So, some trivia about this one is that this was the first episode to be rated TVG rather than the usual TVPG or TV14 on release. Don't ask me why this episode is rated that because I don't know, it seems no different to any other episode to me. If anything, it might be a bit more dark and gruesome, but <laughs> there you go. My best moment was Homer's way of quickly getting a shop in. This Christmas episode gets a 3 out of 5. So, I might be a part of a target audience for this given that I tend to dislike the cliché happy Christmas stories, which often have very little substance. This was clearly designed with the intent to subvert the hell out of that narrative at every turn, and instead have our protagonists get kicked around for most of the runtime. At first it was like, yay, even though their tree burned down, the town pitches in to help them. Then it was, oh, Bart lied all along, so now the town hates them. Then, right at the end, the town has a change of heart, and forgive them again. But oh wait, they were actually stealing their stuff instead. I mean, the cynical nature here of the story is so in your face that you just can't escape it. Now, do I think that they succeeded at pulling off that story? Mmm, no, not really. To be fair, if you are going to do that dark, depressing type story, then you do need to double down on it, and this surely did. However, it ended up feeling a bit samey, which hurt the entertainment value. Don't get me wrong, there were a few good lines here and there, and the intro scene of Homer posing as the cashier to get his shopping quickly, that was pretty funny. In the main note, this episode felt like it was just going through the motions, with a good few moments sprinkled in here and there. That is why I gave this the middle of the road rating of a 3. Now, I can understand why some people would really dislike this episode, but I've never really got that anger from it personally. I could see what the writers were going for, and as such, I viewed the episode with that in mind. That probably helped me to take all of the gut punches the episode gave out a bit more in my stride. Or maybe it's just my personality, I don't know. Season 9, Episode 11 all singing, all dancing. Bart and Homer are horrified to discover that their video rental is a musical. Marge tries to get them into the spirit by recalling song and dance numbers from seasons past. So, if you remember back to last episode, this trivia is basically the same. This is one of only four episodes that was rated TVG in its original release. Again, I don't know what was going on around this time, but it's a fact nonetheless. My best moment, and believe me, it was a struggle to pick one, 
was Homer's constant failure to shut the window, which allowed Snake back in. It wasn't even that good a moment, but this episode wasn't very good, so it kind of sums it up. As you might have guessed, this episode is a 1 out of 5. Not only was this a clip show, but it was a clip show about songs. Who on earth thought that would be a good idea? I guess I can admire their audacity for even trying this, but let's be real, this episode sucked. Sure, the clips used were decent, but because there were songs, there was not really any comedy to be found. The small plot running through the episode of Snake repeatedly breaking in made no sense really, and it didn't add much. I have nothing else to say on this, quite possibly the worst clip show so far. Season 9, Episode 12, Bart Carney. When Homer costs a carnival worker and his son their jobs, he offers them a place to stay. But the Carneys lock the family out of their house and claim it as their own. So some trivia is that the song that plays on the end credits is Groove Me by King Floyd. My favourite moment was Homer and Chief Wiggum's encounter over a bribe. This one is a 4 out of 5. So this could have easily been a 3 to be honest because plot wise it is fairly silly at times. This should definitely be treated as a gag episode though and it works better if you don't take it too seriously. As you may have guessed by the fact that I gave it a 4, the jokes are mostly to my taste. They are quite a lot packed in too. And even though not all of them landed, I felt that the majority did. Some examples of my favourites were the yard simulator Bart wanted to try after refusing to do the real yard work. Nelson's line of, what did Hitler ever do to you? After Bart destroys his car is pretty funny. As is Homer and Marge's argument about using fire to take down the cooters. I also like the little scary tunnel ride that Bart and Lisa go on. That skeleton that jumps down accompanied by a hee-haw sound. That got a laugh out of me. I will admit that Homer is probably portrayed a bit too dumb at times here though. I mean there are multiple times that he does not understand the simple thing that he is told and he reacts to situations in a completely over the top silly way. Sometimes they get away with it like with that Chief Wiggum exchange that I found funny, however there are many other times which they don't. So yeah I found this to be enjoyable overall but I would not argue too hard with anyone who dislikes this episode because it can get a bit too silly at times. Season 9, Episode 13, The Joy of Sect. Along with most of Springfield, Homer and his family are lured into the movementarian cult. But when Marge realises that the cult is a scam, she sets out to rescue her family. So some trivia is that the sequence of Mr. Burns introducing his new religion, that is the parody of the music video for Michael Jackson's History. My best moment was Willie interrogating Homer. This one got a 5 out of 5 from me. Indeed, this is quite a famous episode of the show and for good reason. It does do a good job of showing off the basics of how religious cults operate and to be honest most of the stuff here probably applies to cults in general. My favourite aspect of this was the you're free to leave at any time when in actuality there was barbed wire fencing and alligator pools amongst many other things in a way. This is a good metaphor for how these cults often claim people are free to leave but in reality they are anything but. It was clear that Scientology was kind of the main source of inspiration for the story, but I'm sure the writers had other organisations in mind too. The plot does not really get shaken up until Marge escapes and teams up with Reverend Lovejoy and Ned. This gives her the ability to go and set her family free. That whole section is great and leads to some great moments such as Marge tricking her kids with hover bikes and of course that Homer and Willie interrogation scene that I mentioned. I just love Willie saying, don't bad mouth my leader, to Marge after she notices that he's going off track. The ending to all this was kind of sudden, but just watching the leader get revealed and then crashing into Cletus' shack was fun enough. At least Cletus made him pay up for his deception, quite literally. The entertainment value is just top notch across the board here, and it is the main reason why I rate this so highly. To go with the scenes I've already talked about, you have the na 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 leader chant, as well as Mr. Burns' brief attempt at being a god. Good stuff all around. Season 9, Episode 14, Daz Bus. When a school field trip goes wrong, the students find themselves marooned on a deserted island. The trivia here is that much of this episode is a spoof on the novel Lord of the Flies. My best moment was, do you kids want to be like the real UN or do you just want to squabble and waste time? That quote by Principal Skinner. I gave this one a 3 out of 5. About halfway through I felt sure that this would be a 4 and as such, by the time the credits rolled, I was still tempted to give that rating. But to me, once the kids actually reached the deserted island, things fell rather flat. A good chunk of the time was wasted on Nelson and the rest of the kids accusing Milhouse of stealing the food. I did not find that angle particularly interesting or funny, and it certainly wasn't helped by the fact that both Milhouse and Nelson were just annoying. Instead of doing that trial which resulted in a chase scene, they could have used the castaway type premise to do something more clever and engaging. 
Also, the way the ending just cuts away and says that the kids are rescued by, let's just say, Mo, it was kind of just there for me. I don't really hate it, and it may well be just a reference to Lord of the Flies, but it still just leaves me feeling a bit meh about the whole plot. On the more positive side of things, there were some good jokes and moments, mostly commonly in the first half. I liked most of the banter in the UN club, and Rolf trying to race a banana down a bus was also pretty amusing. Season 9, Episode 15, The Last Temptation of Crust. After accepting that his comedic style is outdated, Krusty tries out some edgier material as a stand-up comedian. The title of this episode is a reference to the 1988 film The Last Temptation of Christ. My best moment was the Canyonero commercial. This one is another 3 out of 5. I think I have said this before in this series, but I'm not a big Krusty fan. And I think this episode is a good example of why. It is just so predictable. You know in a Krusty episode you will get jokes about how much of a sellout he is and how bad he is at actually entertaining people. We of course got a ton of them here and none of them stand out as being particularly good. The jokes in general here were not the best. In fact, my favourite one was probably Marge telling Lisa to bury all of their money in the yard to stop Homer from burning it. In regards to the story, the best thing that could be said for it is that it does provide some good insight into how comedians work. The people loved Krusty as soon as he started going off on the real things that annoyed him and as soon as he sells out they stop caring what he has to say. It really is true that in real life people tend to latch on to entertainment figures that they perceive as authentic even if the reality is that they are just putting it on as a public image. That side of things is interesting at least and along with the Canyonero song at the end helps salvage this episode a bit. Season 9 Episode 16 Dumbbell Indemnity when Mo goes broke, romancing a new love, he gets Homer in on an illegal scheme to collect $5,000 from his car's insurance policy. Some trivia here is that the song that plays during the montage of Mo and Renee dating is the 1966 song I'm a Believer by the Monkees. My best moment was Homer's failed attempts at getting rid of the car. Mo finding love, eh? Well, it gets a 4 out of 5 from me on this occasion. It gets slow in some parts, but overall this is a good episode. It's one of the better ones with Mo in my opinion because we get to see both sides to him that we know and love. We get plenty of the awkward and shady parts of his character, what with his interactions with Renee and his various attempts at fraud throughout the episode, but we also get to see flashes of his more likeable side. He develops a genuine fondness for Renee and it is good to see their bond grow throughout the episode. He also does make up with Homer in the end, even if it is in an understated way. It is similar to the ending of season 3's Flaming Moe's in a way, of course, in the end, it was all too good to be true for Mo, and his tendencies would cost him his relationship in the end. It was fun while it lasted though, so I have no real complaints about it, even if Mo does. The jokes were also above average here. Homer is always bringing the fun, whether he is wearing thief's clothes at the dinner table, or failing to dispose of the car. I also like how he escapes from prison by hitting Mole Man on the head with the tunneling book. It also leads to the great line, Must kill Mo. Wee! Must kill Mo. Wee! So yeah, this was a good episode overall. It was only the fact that it dragged a bit in the first half which stopped it from being a 5. Season 9, Episode 17, Lisa the Simpson. Lisa is convinced that she's genetically predisposed to lose her intelligence. Meanwhile, Apu discovers Jasper Beardley frozen in his freezer. As it was a carryover from Season 8, this episode was the final one that was run by Bill Oakley and Josh Weinstein. My best moment was... Moon pie, what a time to be alive. I gave this one a 4 out of 5. As a Lisa story, you know it comes with the territory and you all get some kind of personality crisis that she has to deal with. This time, it comes in the form of her genetics. While I'm certainly not going to try and get into how realistic that is, it serves its purpose well enough. I can empathise with Lisa to a certain extent, because the feeling that you're becoming dumber is the worry that a lot of people have, especially if they're struggling with education or something like that. It also does end in a happy way for her, which is a good thing. I mean, we certainly don't want the episode to leave us with the idea that Lisa is going to be unhappy for the rest of her life now, do we? That being said, all of the successful Simpsons women seem to come from nowhere at the end. And what about Herb? He was a smart male Simpson. I guess we just forget about him for this episode, don't we? Also, I hate to go on nitpicking the message here, but basing how successful someone is solely on if they went to college and got a well-paying job is not something I agree with. And anyone quote unquote smart should realise that there is a lot more that goes into living a happy and meaningful life than that. That is why I didn't like it when Lisa said to Bart and Homer's face that she didn't want to end up being failures like them. That was a bit uncalled for in my opinion. 
Now, I am fully aware that I'm likely reading too much into this, but these episodes often demand a more careful look, and this one is no different. Anyway, on to a more fun thing, the jokes. The subplot was fun, with the moon pies and the freak show Quickie Mart. I also love the, no, let us speak, I'm trying to get fired, as Lisa is going off script. That is a great twist of the whole cliche that is often seen in movies, when even though the person is going off script, the producer lets the person carry on because they are so moved by what they have to say. Season 9, episode 18, This Little Wiggy. Bart is annoyed when Marge makes him hang out with Ralph Wiggum, but his association with Ralph quickly turns out to be beneficial when he learns that his father holds the master key to every door in Springfield. So, some gaming related trivia is that there is a quest in Simpsons Tapped Out, which is named after this episode. Completing the quest unlocks Ralph and his house. My best moment here was the trip to the Knowledge GM. This one got a 3 out of 5. I have a hard time really describing why, but I never really got into this one. Maybe it's just because Bart does not seem into this himself. Having him constantly bored and frustrated with Ralph does not exactly make for riveting viewing. There was a nice little exchange with Bart and Marge where she tricks him into hanging out with Ralph, but other than that, the character interactions here are rather disappointing. There is a contrast in Bart and Ralph's characters for sure, but I don't think that was really put to good use in this episode. Whenever the bullies are on screen, it shows this episode at its worst, in my opinion. Bart feels the need to impress them for some reason, and he quite easily throws Ralph to the side in order to please them. Now, this may be a realistic take on how peer pressure works, but when Ralph is on the receiving end, it kind of comes across as unnecessarily cruel. Not to mention that the third act came out of nowhere completely, with that whole electric chair nonsense. That side of things is so tacked on that I don't think it really deserves much analysis. So yeah, the plot was mediocre, but it was not all bad. The jokes told were solid at least. I liked the opening set piece at the museum. There were a lot of good gags in there, and seeing how excited Homer was after it is kind of endearing. I also liked the, you don't have to tell me sir, line from Smithers after Burns tells him that there is a rocket in his pocket. Season 9, episode 19. Simpson Tide. Homer takes up a new career in the Navy, and is soon put in charge of a submarine heading into Russian waters. So, some trivia is that before the submarine submerges, the song that can be heard playing is In the Navy by the Village People, and they can also be seen dancing on the sub as well. My best moment was the USSR returning. This one got a 4 out of 5 from me. Chalk this one up as a wacky plot with not much substance. I feel like I'm saying that a lot this season. In the interest of fairness though, as long as an episode is funny, I will always cut it some slack. And this one is very funny. Putting Homer through military school is always good for a laugh, and once he gets in, it is even better. I loved his exchange with the captain about wanting peas, which the captain mistook as wanting peace. I also loved Homer's line, and you're like the father that I never visit. Once Homer gets put in charge, it all does become rather silly. And by the time the ending came, I was so disinterested with the plot that I didn't really care. The subplot of Millhouse and then everyone else getting an earring was much simpler of course and it did even connect to the main plot, albeit in a bit of a half assed way. Some of the best moments overall in the episode include the Planet of Donuts sequence, which is literally the first scene in the episode. It really does set the stage well for what is to come. I also loved that sequence of the USSR returning. I mean, how could you go wrong with Abe trying to defend Homer from accusations of being a communist, only to proclaim him a communist in that same interview? At least he isn't a porn star though. Also, Vladimir Lenin coming back to crush capitalism may be on the nose, but it still works, damn it. Season 9, Episode 20, The Trouble with Trillions. When Homer's fraudulent tax returns are discovered by the IRS, he is forced to work for the government. This includes a mission to retrieve a trillion dollar bill stolen by Mr. Burns. So, this episode's title is a reference to the Star Trek episode, The Trouble with Tribbles. My best moment was Homer rushing to get his taxes done on time. This episode gets a 3 out of 5. This is another wacky plot, which starts off well with Ned Flanders and his taxes. I love how he just wakes up on New Year's Day and gets right to work on them. What a life Ned leads. I also love when he tells Todd that taxes pay for those people who just don't feel like working, God bless them. The preceding rush from the town to pay the taxes is also great. Homer's actions to fake his taxes are a bit ridiculous, but I still found it hilarious and it is needed to set up his relationship with the government. After that though, the story proceeds in an erratic manner. One minute Homer is simply spying on his friends, the next he's fleeing the country with Burns and Smithers. 
The idea of Burns stealing a trillion dollar bill and keeping it in his home is dumb to begin with, but when you pair that with a trip to Cuba just to hand it over to Castro, it just really is too much. Not to mention that nothing is resolved in the end, we just get a casual line from Burns about how he will bribe the jury, and we just leave the episode there with them all stranded at sea. It really is just stupidity all round. The plot may ruin things a bit, but once again, the comedy manages to turn the episode into something decent. This government computer can process over 9 tax returns a day. Did you really think you could fool it? And I also love the, you won't be seeing any prison movies where you're going. Prison. And overall, there is just enough good moments like that for me to tolerate a lackluster plot. Season 9, episode 21. Girly edition. Bart attempts to upstage Lisa when the pair are anchors on a new children's news show. Meanwhile... Homer uses the grandpa in order to obtain a helper monkey. So some trivia about this one is that the clips of Bart in an anchorman's chair from this episode were reused during the episode Million Dollar AB to announce the upcoming Simpsons movie. My best moment was Mojo the Helper Monkey. A 4 out of 5 is what I gave this one. This episode featured both a fun main and subplot. I liked Bart and Lisa's interactions here. It's good to see them continually try to one up each other. It was also nice to see a greater focus on the kids in general here. They brought some nice energy to the plot. There is some mild satire in here about the media, but they didn't really take jabs at it too much. Something like Bart's people is exactly the type of thing that the media would run, as shown by Kent Brockman being the one to give Bart the idea. So if anything, it was just an honest portrayal of how new shows really work, right down to the show being cancelled at the end. Speaking of the big climax to the story, I do like how they foreshadowed Willie's anger to Bart at the start, even if it took a while to pay off. Some of the ending still felt a bit rushed though. Lisa telling Willie Bart is his son was mildly amusing, but it's still winding him over far too quickly, really. As I mentioned before, Mojo the Helper Monkey also entertained. I love how quickly he falls down to Homer's level, and how annoyed Marge is by the whole situation. In terms of the jokes, none were full on laugh out loud funny, but there are quite a few that I found reasonably good. Abe saying, I can't wait to eat that monkey, was probably my favourite of the bunch. Season 9, episode 22, Trash of the Titans. Homer's hatred for taking out the trash leads him to challenge the local government and create his own trash collection services. Some trivia is that the Garbage Man song is the parody of The Candy Man from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. And that parody worked because my best moment was The Garbage Man song. This is a great episode and as such it gets a 5 out of 5. Maybe you could call this one a bit of a guilty pleasure. I mean, the plot is very wacky and Homer is a jerk throughout much of it. The ending is even a total cop-out where they literally move the town a few miles down the road. I normally would shake my fist and declare the episode a write-off, but somehow this episode manages to get away with it. Homer is a dope here, but it's made clear that he will end up failing. I mean, Ray Patterson does literally predict that he will end up crashing and burning. Homer put poor Ray through so much that it's kind of nice to watch him get the last laugh in the end. How he just says to everyone, you're screwed, and just walks off. The main reason I can forgive some of the flaws in the story is that it's just so much fun. Homer's antics in the debate are hilarious. As is his campaign slogan of, can't someone else do it? That great musical number also helps my enjoyment for sure. If these funny moments aren't enough for you, then there's even a bit of subtle political satire too. And the stuff here really does apply to all levels from local government right to the top. Season 9, episode 23, King of the Hill. Upset by Bart's shame of his poor physical condition, Homer sets out to get in shape. However, a pair of publicity scouts soon offer him the job of climbing the murder horn to promote their product. So a fun fact is that the murder horn in this episode is stated to be over 4 miles or 21,120 feet in height. This is actually taller than Mount McKinley, which is the biggest mountain in the US in real life. The best moment for me was Homer not knowing what a gym is. This episode gets a 4 out of 5 rating. Sure, it stretches believability at times in how Homer was able to not only survive all of the stuff that he went through, but actually had the motivation to carry on with his weight loss plan. Despite that though, it still worked reasonably well. It was simple, but sometimes all it takes is Homer genuinely looking to improve his health to get us on his side. Obviously, he is motivated by proving himself to Bard after embarrassing him at the picnic, and he really does try hard to that end. It is just nice to see him feel that need to make it up to Bard without being pushed into it by anyone else. Well, I say he wasn't being pushed. You did have those few applesauce bar guys who were just using him for publicity. 
Homer didn't know Lab though, and still pushed on in the end, despite being told that he couldn't do it. The jokes are on the good side here too. The Gaim joke is classic, and it's made even better by the fact that when he finally goes in the gym and sees it all, he's like, oh, a Gaim. I also like the gag of Homer using up all of his oxygen within the first few feet of the climb. And of course, how can I forget A claiming he survived a fall of 8,000 feet onto jagged rocks? People were much tougher back then, you know? Now, this episode never threatened to become a classic or anything, and it is by no means one of the more memorable episodes of the show, but if you're after a fun, feel-good type of episode, then you could do a lot worse than giving this one a watch. Season 9, Episode 24, Law Star Lisa. After boarding the wrong bus, Lisa finds herself lost in unfamiliar parts of Springfield. After realising this, Homer then has to go and find her. So, Mike Scully came up with the idea for this plot, as he used to live in West Springfield, Massachusetts, and used to have a hard time convincing his parents to let him take the bus. The best moment for me was the ending. This episode is a good 5 out of 5. Homer and Lisa's stories are usually pretty good, and this one is no different. I kind of like how this one didn't follow that same formula as, say, Lisa Substitute or Lisa the Greek, where Homer has done something wrong and is trying to make up for it. Here, if anything, it is Lisa who caused all of the problems they encounter by tricking Homer into allowing her to go on a bus. I do like Lisa's bus ride too. There are some nice exchanges with Agnes and comic book guy. Also, who can forget the antisocial bus driver who refuses to help Lisa out and then dumps her off in the middle of nowhere. Seriously, that guy is kind of evil if you think about it. The third act does get a bit silly with Homer's antics, what with the crane, followed by his head getting crushed by a drawbridge. I guess it does fit into his life advice about taking risks though. The ending is quite sweet too, and it serves as a nice moment between Homer and Lisa to round off the story. The subplot is very bare bones, but it is worth it just for that scene at the doctor's. Dr. Hibbert has some fun lines like, If only I had $75 for every novelty I remove. Followed by, by the way, I'll need a check for $75. The most famous of his quotes here though, has to be, Heavens no, it had to be terror sweat. I wonder if it really did need to be that, or if he was just trolling Bart. Either way, this episode is certainly no troll. I very much enjoyed it. Season 9, Episode 25, Natural Born Kisses. When their anniversary dinner is lacklustre, Homer and Marge start to lose passion for their love life. They soon discover new ways to spice it up. So, some trivia is that this was the first episode written by Matt Stellman, who partly based it on his own parents' marriage. My best moment was Homer and Marge at the mini golf course. The season finale gets a 4 out of 5. This is hardly going to win any prizes for being a great story with deep characters or anything. In fact, the plot barely has enough steam to carry it through the runtime. Despite that though, it was still a good watch. I actually brought into the Marge and Homer dynamic where they needed something exciting to spice up their marriage. For Homer, it's not that unexpected, but it's rare to see Marge act this way. So being able to see how she reacts to running around the town naked is funny by itself. Homer dangling from that hot air balloon was also great. I love how he gets stuck on a church's glass window. Bart and Lisa have a brief subplot, which is okay for what it was. My favourite bits with them is when they comment on the antics of Homer and Marge. I love how they act so sickened by the lovey-dovey stuff. I also like how they catch on just so quickly to Marge's attempt to explain the situation away. Overall, this was nothing too special plot-wise, but it was a fun way to end the season. And with that, every episode of Season 9 is reviewed. And here is a summary of Season 9. The overall average score for the season is 3.7, which is the second lowest so far. Only Season 1 had a lower score than that. In terms of my top 5 best episodes for the season, my favourite was The Joy of Sect, Lisa Sachs was number 2, Treehouse of Horror 8 was number 3, Trash of the Titans was number 4, and Law Star Lisa was number 5. The bottom 5 is All Singing All Dancing gets number 1, The Principal and the Pauper gets number 2, The Last Temptation of Crust is number 3, Miracle on Evergreen Terrace gets number 4, and The Trouble with Trillions is number 5. I will say though that only number 1 and 2 on that list are really bad episodes, the other 3 are just kind of mediocre. In terms of my initial thoughts, having just completed this season, it wasn't actually quite as good as I remembered, and that is the first time so far that I'm saying that about a season. I noted in season 8 that it was the worst of a classic era because you could see the signs of the plots becoming thinner and thinner and more out there. This season is basically like season 8, only it took it even further in that regard and it didn't have the party type atmosphere that season 8 had to save it. Indeed, this season was quite gritty in comparison to the last, now, I don't want to be too negative because I would still call this a good season overall, as there was plenty of fun stuff here, 
I definitely would rank it higher than season 1 for example, but there is just something kind of off when I compare this season to the classic era, and I can't even really explain why. There was just something missing. I did notice on quite a few occasions, even in episodes where the jokes were good in the main, they seemed to really try and force it a bit too much. Instead of just letting the humour come naturally, we often got things which takes us out of the moment. For example, in The Trouble with Trillions, just as they are about to get on the plane, Homer tries to stick the note in the vending machine. This type of thing would not be a big deal by itself, but it happens on a semi-regular basis throughout the season. Once they have some success with wacky humour, they seem to have a hard time letting it go, and it does become a bit much at times. Homer is the one guilty of this the most often. Even in episodes which have nothing to do with him, he still finds a way of getting in on some kind of wacky subplot. I know Mike Scully gets much of the blame for this type of dynamic, but I'm not sure I want to nail my colours to that mask. After all, some of the episodes he wrote over the years had a lot of heart, such as Marge Be Not Proud and Lisa on Ice. Regardless of why that tone shift happened though, it will only get more noticeable in the upcoming season. So let's just buckle up now, ready for seasons 10 and 11, shall we? Before I go, I do have to say that I would still recommend this season to fans of the show. Although it doesn't quite show the series at its best, it still contains some very funny stuff and some of the leftover goodness from the classic era is still present. Anyway, that about rounds up this video. Thanks to anyone who watched it to the end and as always, take care everyone.